Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can make an array along a curve using geometry nodes so that it's not going to deform the object that's being arrayed. So I've done a video on this before using a chain axe as an example, and in that we were using a pretty standard technique of instancing onto a plane and using that plane to be arrayed so that the object doesn't get deformed. But it's not the simplest thing to do, and geometry nodes has definitely made this a little bit easier. So what I thought I'd do is get this chainsaw, and we're going to do the same thing again, but this time we're going to use geometry nodes to show how we can do this and it makes life much easier so let's get started with this so what we've got is our chainsaw here and the first thing we need is a curve that we can instance this along so I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to press ctrl and r to make an edge all the way along here right click to confirm that and then we're just going to select some of that edge so for example there all the way down to let's go all the way down and then we can see how that works I'm going to press P and then I'm going to separate that by selection and then I'm going to go into object mode select that and then let's F2 and call this chain curve the other thing that I want to do is get my object that is going to be instanced on this which is this one here and let's name that something easy to remember so I'll call that F2 and I'm going to call this I don't know tooth the other thing that we want to make sure is that this is facing in a sensible direction. So if I bring up my M panel, you can see that there's no rotation on this, which means this is going to be the way it's instanced. And it's really important you sort that out. So let's come up here to where our chain line is, or chain curve is, and notice this isn't actually a curve at this point, so let's deal with that first of all. So I'm going to forward slash to isolate it. So I'm going to right click on that convert to and convert it to a curve. Now we could actually do this as part of the geometry node as well. It doesn't really make a difference, but I just have a tendency to do that outside of it. So let's bring up our geometry node editor here and we can start fiddling around with this to make this work. Now we're gonna click new to get our geometry node in. Let's zoom in on that. And we'll start with the basic thing. So shift and A, we want to instance on points. So I'm going to put instance on points there and I'm going to click that pin so that even if I click on something else this stays there and then I'm going to come down to where my tooth is and then just drag that in and then I can instance my tooth on my points and we've got lots of teeth. Now first thing to do is to actually check some scales which I should have done to begin with so let's have a look at that and that has got a scaling issue it's not all the same so I'm going to control an A and apply the scale there and I should also go and have a look at this chain curve because I can't remember if this was scaled and no it's not so control an A and apply the scale. That's going to be the first thing that's going to cause some problems if you notice that this isn't working. The other thing is at this point we've got well a million of these teeth. If I just forward slash to isolate this and then go into edit mode you can see that we've got all of these points along the curve and it gets very fine at this edge so we get all these overlaps. We don't want that so we're going to fix that by telling Blender to put in only a point every so often. We do that by resampling our curve. So let's resample, click that there, and we can either do that by count or I have a tendency to prefer to do that by length. And we can bring that length to, let's say, I don't know, there, maybe a meter, maybe one. That looks about right. Now, the other problem that I've got here at the moment is while this is looking like it's doing the right thing, the teeth are too far in. And that's actually my fault because I've got my origin in the wrong place. I say wrong place, it's in a place, we just need to fix it. So if I again go into edit mode, you can see each of these copies is being instanced on one of these points. And the problem is that over here is my origin is all the way there in this object. So that's the exact point that's being put on top of the curve. Now we've got a couple of ways of editing this. Depends if you want to do this here or in the geometry node. So let's do the way that we do it here in the viewport. So what I'll do is come up to here to options, say that I only want to affect the origin and then I can G and Z that up. And as I move the origin, it's gonna move everything out. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, if I want to do it in the geometry nodes, is that we can just move these instances. So if I just do a transform node here, I can move that along again. Or let's just turn this so it's not affecting the origin, it's affecting the whole thing. We can move this along the Z. So I'll just go to here where it says translation, and I just want to move that along the Z, and that will move that. Now, I'm going to undo that for a second just so I can demonstrate another point and then we'll kind of come back to this because that's quite important. So, the issue we've got at the moment is this is looking really great on the lower portion of my weapon, but it's looking absolutely naff here. And the reason for that is that these instances are all just staying in the same direction as this and we need to rotate it. For that, we need to recognize that we're instancing this on a curve and a curve is made up of a lot of different bits to it. But importantly, 
if I just go into edit mode, the most important bit that we want this to follow along is well, the curve itself. We want this line to be going effectively there and then all of our points sticking out that way. Now, there's several ways of dealing with this, but I'm actually just gonna use the element of the curve itself. So basically this line, which is the tangent of the curve. So all I'm gonna come in here is Shift and A and type in tangent. And then we've got curve tangent here and we can join that to our rotation and that will rotate all of our instances. But we've got a slight problem in that this doesn't work. If I do this and put this into our rotation, it all goes a bit messed up because it doesn't quite know what it's trying to do. Let's undo that. And Blender's got a nice way of sorting that out. We just need to shift an A and bring in a Euler to vector. So line Euler to vector. And we importantly want to remember that this tangent is not a rotation. It is a vector. A tangent is just a line that is pointing in a direction. So that means that we have to put this into the vector section and then we can put that into the rotation and it's now, well, facing that way. And this is quite easy to sort out. Now, obviously you could just fiddle around with these and click the one until it's right and Y is the one that's correct. But it's probably easier if you understand why it's doing that. So if I come to our object that we are instancing and let's bring it so we can see the gizmo. So we'll have our local gizmo on this. We can see where everything's pointing. And at the moment we've got, well, our Z is pointing up, our Y is pointing in that direction and our X is pointing well towards the screen in this instance. And that's why at the moment this is pointing in the wrong direction because we've told it to follow the tangent, which is pointing in this direction. So it is putting the X axis, which is pointing towards the screen in that direction. So hopefully from that you can realize that well the one that we want in this direction is the Y axis, which is why if I just click the Y axis, that will work. I'm just gonna get rid of that annotation and put that back. So we can just align that to the Y axis and now everything's gonna follow along really nicely. And what's cool about this is that we can change our transformation on the Z axis and it's still gonna work, but it pushes everything away or towards the curve as we wanted. So we can quickly fiddle around with that until we've got it at the point we want. We can also still fiddle around with how long we want this. In fact, actually one meter looks about right. We could make this a bit longer so there's less teeth or a bit closer so that there's less teeth. And we do have this one tooth that's coming here. That's because it's, well, again, going all the way across this curve. And I can quite easily fix this because it's in geometry nodes. It's a modifier so we can change things and it'll still work. So I want to get, let's say, get rid of that point. And no, let's get rid of that one as well. And you can go along until, yeah, that looks pretty much perfect. And we've still got that working. So yeah, I would say that this is a much nicer way to work than the standard instancing that you do using an array along a curve. I mean, to me, it just is much more intuitive and it's much easier to understand and fiddle around with. I mean, it doesn't take long to set up and there's a lot of other tricks that you can do with this later on. For example, you can do some really fun things with this. And if you've got some really complex curves that go in interesting directions, there's lots of things you can do to allow you to align your points to that perfectly, which you can't quite get or doesn't work very well when you do this along an array. If you want some more videos on that and things you can do with curves and instancing, then let me know because it's quite a fun topic and you can make some really cool shapes and models. Have a great day, guys.